Yeah, it's a jittery game if you're Bellarmine in the city of Louisville. Uh, but they were they gave them all they wanted for 30 plus minutes. So uh, that being said, uh, I expect them to shoot the ball a little bit better from the perimeter against us than they did against Louisville, which is going to probably ruin my day Saturday <laughs> after the game. But that's why we're playing them. Uh, in all seriousness, they're. Uh, they they have a Division One front line, uh, starting a six nine guy that uh, is a five, definitely a Division One player, uh, and, and Josh Dirksen and and uh, you know the other guy Sug, uh, uh, Suggs and uh, the the big German guy. The them guys are good, man. I mean, and 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 they're the they're big German. Like Scotty told me, practiced with them all year last year. So they have. Uh, they're bigger than most teams we play, so that's a good thing. Would it be a stretch to say that this team is probably better than some of the Division One teams you'll play early in the year? Uh, they could be. They could be. I think the key for Bellarmine will be they have a new point guard from junior college. They lost their point guard, uh, it, but as time goes, I think that it could be. It, it, it'll be their biggest team, but there's no doubt that the, they're, they're better coached than most teams. Uh, probably including Cincinnati. <laughs> They're so well coached. Uh, no, I was quick to agree with that. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, a lot of everybody's head was saying yes, no. But they, 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 the thing about playing them is the way they pass the ball is something that we've worked really hard on with our team. Uh, Scotty and I are very good friends, so um, we, if, you would go, if you come to the game early, both, we, both teams will be doing the same drills and warm-ups. Uh, from a passing standpoint, same passing drill. So uh, we try, they, they've, they've led the, the world in field goal percentage three of the last five years. That's every basketball league, Europe, the NBA, college, everything. So uh, they, they do a great job of playing team basketball. So they do it on defense as well, so, uh, which even though Grand Valley State did the same thing, is which it made it hard on us to get the ball inside, but obviously, the way we shot the ball, <laughs> it didn't matter. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Hopefully, we're a team that can, can. I thought we did a good job of the other night of when they did take us away inside. We made them one more pass, and that's why we were shooting wide open shots. So we're going to have to do the same thing against Bellarmine because they have to help. They're a big help team. Uh, obviously, in your Division Two, you don't have the depth of a Division One team. So you got they got to protect their big guys with a lot of help. Will you? Approach this the same as you did the first exhibition game in terms of trying to see different things, get everybody to play, even though they're a better, they're a better team. And uh, did you worry about having to win the game? I guess um, I'm not worried about winning a game. I would like to play well. Yeah. Uh, I, what I'll say is, uh, combination-wise, uh, I think we'll be able to play bigger at times because they're so big. Mm -hmm. uh, where I. Grand Valley was struggling to score, so when it, when Corey got in there, where they were putting him in, they were they were trying to like, ISO him and go one on one at him from the top of the key. Obviously, we're not going to let that happen in the regular season, but I think at this time of year, it's good for him to practice that, where he's got to move his feet one on one in a late clock situation. So there's some things that you that that uh, we wouldn't let we wouldn't put ourselves in certain situations in a real game. But I think it's good for us to practice in, in what I would call when that happens to us, what we call emergency situations, uh, instead of just strategically hiding Corey inside with what we do defensively when the real running starts. It's good for him to get out there and practice it because the more guys, the more our big guys get better at being mobile defensively, the better we'll be defensively. Uh, and, you know, and offensively. We're not run, you know, I, we have a lot more in than, than we ran the other night. We have a lot more in than we're going to run Saturday. Mm -hmm. But you're saving it for the real, you know, it, you're, you're not trying to show all your, your, your ways you're going to try to get the ball inside uh, in an exhibition game. And really, I just want to continue to practice on, on no huddle offense uh, and keeping the ball moving and getting our guys used to running the floor and keeping the ball moving. Uh, so. A couple years ago, you talked about Coming into the season, how much uh, the emphasis you had on Justin and him improving and, and, and almost a, have a similar talk with um, with the, with Shaq. Oh yeah. This year, I mean, in, in fact, he, he's a guy who's been in your program uh, for years and he's had to grow in that way. Yeah, I think very, very similar to Justin. The other thing is, I think you got to look in the mirror as a coach. Um, you know, I, I think probably the it's been a long time, but I've spent a lot of time recently talking more with Coach Patino, trying to be a friend to him. But the, the, probably the biggest thing I learned from him is, is you always got to 
put it on yourself as well when a kid's not, when one of your players maybe isn't playing the way you would like him to play uh, or, or developing at the rate you would like him to develop. I think too many people blame the player instead of go home and figure out how you can coach him better. Uh, and, and that's what we try to do in our program. Uh, we don't, you know, I, I don't allow complaining. From, we we got to find a way to coach him better. And that's what I've tried to work on with, with Shaq. Uh, you know, really say, you know, how, how can I get, get him to play better? Uh, because he wants to please you. He wants to play better. So it's same, very similar to Justin Jackson, just really trying to analyze how he can become a better player. Uh, and the answer for him is to be more of a playmaker, you know, with, with, because, because of his size and the way he can drive the ball, he should be a, the pa a passer, a very good passer like a LeBron James because he can pass over the defense and just really trying to work with him on that. Where in the past, he was, we tried to work with him on finishing so much, I don't think his mind was on making the pass. Uh, so, you know, it's a two-way street. You know, you try to, I think, you know, that, we're, we're honest around here. You, you know, we, we try to tell the kids, hey, we got to do a better job coaching, and he's bought into it. You know, he, he's really had a great off season. He wants, to, he wants to have a great year, and he's a guy that wants to please you. So just trying to do a better job coaching him, and uh, he's trying to do a great job of buying into it. Uh, and the other thing with him is get, the, the more he does that, he, he eliminates the off-balance shot, he's going to get to the foul line. So if, you can, if he gets to the foul line at seven times a game, he's going to have a great year. And he's going to have a tremendous year. But you're not going to get to the foul line taking off-balance shots. So you've got you to go get fouled or you've got to become a passer. And use your size to be a great passer. I think he did a great job of that the other night. The passing can open up the rest of his game. It's tremendous. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, anybody watching the game sees well, this guy's a playmaker. I mean, he's six eight, and he's he, he guy's six foot eight, and he's breaking the defense down, finding the open man. Those those, those guys get to play after college. If you're one of those players, you got you got a chance to play after college. The thing that everyone noticed it from the other night was your shooting, obviously, and your assists. Um, what do you take from that? I mean, you can't expect to shoot that way every game, I guess, but I guess it was a good sign. Good well, sign. I think what I tell our guys were embracing our, our, what we've worked on for the last five months, our, our style of play. Um, we've, tried to, we've tried to just do a better job of coaching it. Now, that being, you say, well, why didn't you do that in the past? Well, well first of all, if you, if you have limited guys, <laughs> that, that, if you don't have five, if you got some limitations, you've got to hide certain people. We don't have anybody we have to hide. So we have everybody's capable of making a shot or making the pass. So the fact that our roster is where it's at now allows us to play this way. And the fact that you know, it's a two-year project with this team. You know, I told everybody last year, we got to improve and we got to get closer together. We got to improve every day. That was our goal. And we've got to a point where we know how to win. We know how to play defense. We, you know, guys know how to compete. So you can graduate on to other things. And for us, it's just really embracing being a better offensive team and how to do it.